All right, guys, let's do another FRQ question. This one time, we're doing one from the 2007 AP exam, the number two question. It deals with open market operations, as well as some balance sheet type concepts here. All right, in recent years, the Federal Reserve has made targeting the federal funds rate a main focus of its monetary policy. First thing it asks is to define the federal funds rate. So what is the federal funds rate? It's the, the rate at which banks charge one another for short-term loans. So if a bank isn't quite making its reserve requirement, it can borrow money from another bank. And other banks are willing to do this because excess reserves that don't do anything um, have an opportunity cost. There's a loss of interest that could be made off those loans. So they're really always willing to loan out every excess reserve that they have usually, even if it means to another bank. So it's the, the, the borrowing and lending from bank to bank. And that's what determines the federal funds rate is the interest rate that those banks charge. Um, for B, it says, if the Federal, Federal Reserve wants to lower the Federal Funds Rate, what open market operation would be appropriate? Now, when it comes to open market operations, it's buying or selling bonds, all right? Government bonds, T-bills, things like that. Um, so what would they want to do to lower that Federal Funds Rate? To make the cost of borrowing money cheaper, they would want to buy bonds. So the appropriate open market operation to lower the Federal Funds Rate would be to buy bonds. Now, everything in this question up to this point is very cut and dry. Now, part C is a little bit more confusing, and the way that I did it initially isn't quite the way that the College Board had the answer. So let's take a look at what it is. I'm going to go over what the College Board answer was, and I'm going to go over what my approach was, because I do believe that they would have accepted both answers as long as you answered it in a certain way, and I'll explain that in just a second. So part C, assume that the open market operation that you indicated in part B, which was buy bonds, is equal to 10 million. If the required reserve ratio is 2.2 or 20%, calculate the maximum change in loans throughout the banking system. So we want to see what the impact on loans is to this open market operation. So first thing we need to point out, it's $10 million. This is what they're actually buying up in bonds. Um, so the way that the college board, I, I'm interpreting their answer, because they didn't give an explanation of how they got to the answer, they just said the answer was 40 million. And I'm gonna go through my process on how I would've got to that answer. They're making the assumption that there's a $10 million increase in everybody's pockets, all right? That these bonds were not solely owned by banks, that regular consumers and investors and corporations owned these bonds, and they were kind of distributed widely throughout the system. So that way, when they were purchased, many of these, much of the cash that was paid for these bonds had to be deposited in banks. So checkable deposits, demand deposits increased by $10 million. Our liabilities then increased by $10 million. Now, for this question, you do not need to draw out this uh, balance sheet. They do not give you the balance sheet. I'm just throwing numbers in here to give you an example of how they came to this answer. So we know what happens, 10 million increase on the liability side of balance sheets in the banks. Um, we get the maximum amount of loans that are created from this by the increase in excess reserves times the money multiplier. Now in this case, we have a 0.2 reserve requirement that makes our money multiplier five. One over the reserve requirement, of one over 20% is five. So up until this point, we're good. Now, how much of this $10 million deposit needs to be put into the required reserves? At this point, two million. Two of the 10 million, 20% of that 10 million has to be put in the reserve requirements. The other remaining eight million is going to be excess reserves. They can loan that then out. So that $8 million is gonna get multiplied through the system. That increase in excess reserves of eight million times the money multiplier of five is gonna end up being 40 million, which College Board says is the answer. So I understand how they got this one. But if you interpreted this question a slight bit differently, you may have come up with a different answer. So this is how my answer would have looked. And if you worded it in a certain way, I think they would have accepted both, not 100% sure on it. But Instead of that money being deposited, make the assumption that all of those bonds were owned by a single bank. Now in this case, Bank A owns $10 million worth of bonds. If the Federal Reserve came in and bought those $10 million worth of bonds up, it wouldn't have changed anything on the balance sheet except bonds and excess reserves. Because now the bank would own $10 million in cash instead of the $10 million in bonds. 
So all that changed here was the loss of the bonds and the increase in excess reserves. What is the bank gonna do with the excess reserves? In this case, they're gonna loan it out. And that $10 million is gonna get multiplied through that money multiplier, and that $10 million is gonna turn into $50,000, $50 million. So in this case, looking at it this way, the increase would have been $50 million. Now, if you would have done it this way, you would have to word that the immediate increase in excess reserves would be 10 million. So therefore, multiplied by the money multiplier, it would be an increase in loans of 50 million. Now it's important that you worded this a certain way. Now, that goes to the point that if you write out your full answer, there's a better chance you get it right. So even if you had either one of these answers, they would have most likely both been right if you worded it the right way, if you gave them the complete explanation of your answer. So make sure that you're doing that. All right, part D. Indicate the effect of the open market operation that you indicated in part B on the nominal interest rate. So once again, we're back to the buying bonds. How is that gonna impact the nominal interest rate? Now, you do not need to draw this model, but this is the model that you would refer to because we're seeing this open market operation this is gonna increase the money supply, and then we're gonna see a drop in the nominal interest rate. So the nominal interest rate would decrease. That's it for part D. Now part E says, assume that the Federal Reserve's action results in some inflation. What would be the impact of the open market operation on the real rate of interest? Explain. So the best way to go about explaining this one has to do with the uh, formula of not the real interest rate formula, nominal interest rates minus inflation give us real interest rates. So we know this holds true. So we know that there's gonna be some inflation and we already knew from part D that nominal interest rates are going down. So let's start with an example, 5% minus 2% is 3% real interest rate. So let's imagine this is where we're at. If we experience some inflation, and we experience a decrease in the nominal interest rate, well, let's see what happens to real interest rates. So our nominal interest rate went down to 4%, could have went down anywhere. Um, and our inflation rate went up to 3%. Maybe it went up a little less, but it doesn't matter. In this example, we've gone down in nominal interest rates, up in inflation, and our real interest rate has declined as well. So in this case, real interest rates would decrease, explain, because nominal interest rates have decreased and inflation has increased, that's all you need to put. That explains the, the understanding of the real interest rate. All right, make sure you're checking out the other FRQ walkthroughs that I've done just to make sure you're on the right track in the way that you're answering these questions. So until next time, guys, take care.